Oh, uh, hey everybody! Uh, long time no see. It's been a couple months since I've done a live stream, so I'm happy to be back. Uh, excited to see everybody here in the chat. Go ahead and say hi. Let us know where you're from. Uh, we're going to do some fun stuff today. We're going to do a, uh, a little competition. I'm going to start sculpting something and nobody knows what it is. First person to guess correctly wins a free copy of my plugin for ZBrush called Ryan's Tools. So we're gonna get started with that really soon. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to do a little show and tell. Uh, I've been going into a ceramic studio and doing some sculpting in clay. That's right, I've been cheating on ZBrush. I've been sculpting in clay. Let me show you guys really quick something I've been working on. Doing a series of ceramic pieces of uh, snakes doing yoga of course it's not traditional yoga poses this one is called when you're a cobra every pose is cobra pose so let's go ahead and get started uh hey navs good morning good to see you here so yeah we're just going to get started uh let me put on the zbrush interface <laughs> instead of my face uh, where did I put that? There we go. All right. So uh, we've got a sphere going, standard sphere. So uh, I'm just going to start sculpting. First person to guess correctly what it is that I'm sculpting. Um, the, the, it has to be the correct. Um, I don't want to give away too many hints here. It is a... Yeah, uh, it's not from a movie or a TV show, but it's a... It's a series of characters. Um, some of you might know, you might not know. I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a test to see um, if, if somebody can get it. It's not like super well-known mainstream, but it's not also super obscure either. It's kind of in between. If you're probably older than 35, you probably know what it is. Actually, no, there's some, there's some that came out in the last year or two, I think. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to start sculpting on this. Also, we're going to have a special guest showing up in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, a special guest in person, on camera, live, in my studio is going to be showing up, and we're going to talk ZBrush and 3D and stuff. So, without further ado, jumping right into it, I'm going to start sculpting, and uh, yeah, we'll just see what we come up with here today, shall we? So I'm looking at reference on a different screen, and uh, just uh, just gonna start sculpting, just start making some stuff here and piecing together the uh, the features of this uh, character's anatomy here. So anybody doing anything interesting creatively recently? Maybe anything uh, outside the realm of ZRush or digital? using a feature of uh, Ryan's tools right now to uh, make an instance clone of objects. So this way you can have a, a mirrored instance, for example, on these, these nostrils, right? Don't even have symmetry turned on. It's actually uh, doing an instance. Yeah, 
anyway, piecing together the face with primitives first uh, just makes it easier to block out, you know, the anatomy. And then once I've got all the pieces where I want them to be, uh, then I'll dynamesh it together and smooth out the, the seams. What's up with my sound? If there, that there's something wrong with my sound, I have no idea. I'm only hearing myself, so I don't know. Um, can people hear me? Uh, the sound is too low. Um, David Arthur says he can hear no problem. Maybe Bumbo Gum. Maybe Bumbo Gum. You can uh, turn your volume up. I don't know. Oh wow, David Arthur nailed it. Wait, no, actually, sorry. Um, take that back. Forget I said that. No, you didn't nail it. But that was just a massive hint. Sorry, I just gave you a massive, massive hint. But uh, yeah, so we don't have a winner yet. First person to guess what type of character this is wins a free copy of Ryan's tools. Oh, there we go. Got to got to give the full <laughs> the full name, David Arthur. Hey, thanks. It is a fancy gizmo. Bum go bum. Uh, this is part of Ryan's tools, so Anyone who gets uh, my plugin Ryan's tools will will get uh, well as long as you get the pro version, you can get my fancy dancy gizmo, which I just like better than the standard gizmo. That's just me. Let me put a link here in the chat to uh, Ryan's tools. So there you can find my plugin. There is a free version, which is an old version. Then there is a uh, $5 version, which is for students and hobbyists. And then there is a uh, $20 version for professionals. And the $20 version comes with some really cool extras some extra like uh, textures and alphas and brushes and uh, gizmo and all kinds of cool stuff.
So David Arthur, uh, that's that's close enough saying garbage pail. It's garbage pail kids. That is correct. Um, the one I am doing today. So also David Arthur, go ahead and uh, send your send me an email to this email address, and I will send you a code to get a free copy of Ryan's tools. The pro version, of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, David Arthur, there are lots of, lots of different garbage pail kids. I'm doing a specific one today. Um, actually, here, let me, show, guys, let me show you guys on screen here which one I'm doing. So I'm doing Drippy Dan. And it's also named Leaky Lou. And anyway, I just thought this one would be fun to do. I had these things when I was a kid. And I was like, I think they came out when I was six or seven years old. And I just loved these things. They were so grotesque and subversive. All right, looks like we've got a, a guest. It's like that episode of uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood over here. Like hey, come, Mr. Rogers. Come, come on over into the camera. What are you? What let's are you like, working let's on? Sure, let's make sure you're on camera here. All right, we got we got special guest James Bochansky in the studio. Greetings. So this is uh, my good friend James. He's also into 3D and ZBrush and uh, animation. He's really into video games too. We actually had him as a guest on this live stream once, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago. Um, so he's super cool. He's going to hang out and chat for a little bit while I keep working on this. Oh man, what happened to Dan? Holy <laughs> smokes. Drippy Dan is, uh, he's, he's leaking. <laughs> Dude, it's so crazy how similar it looks to Cabbage Patch Kids. I wonder if like any of the viewers even know who Cabbage Patch Kids are. Yeah, I'm curious. Someone did guess it already, actually, just before you showed up. Oh, right. Yeah, we got David Arthur in the chat. He figured it out. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing about these Cabbage Patch Kids, there's like a, a whole variety of like different facial structures like some of their faces are more spherical so this one's this one's funny i'm actually like i don't know if i'll do this one it's that's pretty i like fun. it for the snake theme <laughs> um, looks like some of your uh, your sculptures you're doing in the mud room yeah yeah i was talking about i actually showed them the uh the sofa snake uh this is also one that i'd like to do this one's pretty crazy a lot of them have like just random cracks in the skin that's kind of like weird and gross uh, yeah these things were like so big back when i was a kid yeah we got frying ryan <laughs> and kinky christine i can't believe my mom let me have these <laughs> I think like when you're a parent, there's like so much going on. Sometimes things just slip through the cracks. <laughs> yeah. Because my mom was like really protective and like kind of strict about what I watched. But she also like let me watch this movie Tango and Cash, which has like super violence in it and like nudity. And I don't think she realized it. Huh. I never I never saw that. <laughs> oh, here's another one. I like this one. Woody Allen. That would be <laughs> fun to do. <laughs> but the one I'm working on today is Drippy Dan. And it's it's also like I can build the the core body with this one first, and it'll just be like a solid body from which uh, I can pose and do the other ones. It's your garbage pail template. Exactly. So let's see. We got some other comments here. Someone's asked if uh, Blender's going to replace ZBrush. Maybe. Blender seems like it's very much a contender for Maya at this point. Mm, it yeah, does yeah. basically everything it did. I, I taught myself how to use Blender back in like 2017, and it was really challenging. There's a feature with how the window panels work. And if you didn't understand it, you would accidentally create like, instead of just having four panels, you would accidentally pull out like 16 panels. Like, I'm not kidding. It's, it was crazy, but they've since improved it. And it works a lot more like Maya at this point. Um, and since it's open source, people's ability to like develop and improve the program is pretty unrestrained. Like any, if, you know, if you've got the, uh, the right ideas and the right know-how and the, the interest, it's uh, improving the program seems like something that just, it happens on the regular. Um, there has been talk of 
when they're developing like sculptural features and I've seen examples of it and it looks like it, it, it at the very least it does fundamentally what ZBrush does. Yeah, they've had uh, sculpture features in Blender for a long time, but they yeah, they haven't been up to ZBrush's uh, abilities even yet. Well, my question would be like, with ZBrush, it has core essential features, which are really like it's it's bread and butter. Like I remember we were watching the summit and there was somebody who was working I forget what it was on, but it was like pretty high level stuff. And he talked about like his whole workflow was just using just the rudimentary tools and kind of muscling his way through his work. Oh yeah, that was Michael DeFeo. Okay, right. Yeah. And he had like it was really stylized stuff. It was it looked like something like from like the Incredibles or like Team Fortress Two. And it, yeah, it it just worked and his whole philosophy, it really didn't use many of like the modern features that ZBrush has. And I would, I guess if you really wanted to like wonder, like, is Blender a contender? The question would be like, how many of those fundamental features does Blender really bring to the table? And I, I don't actually know what the answer to that is, but that's how I would think about it. Yeah, for anybody just joining us, we got a question. Who is this standing besides me? This is my <laughs> this is my good friend James. Uh, he's been a guest on the podcast before or the uh, the live stream. Uh, also, coincidentally enough, he does actually look kind of like one of my brothers. So, <laughs> good good guess. Hey, you've told me that before. Is that, is that the one we like saw when we were driving across the country? Oh uh, no, that was a different one. Different. Okay, yeah, different brother. <laughs> So I got a question for you. Like, yeah. See how you've got the, it looks like a slice of pizza in the middle. Yeah. Do you ever address that or is that just okay? The fact that that's there. Uh, no, I, I'll address that. That is, that is actually, um, yeah, I'm, I'm breaking my flow here, getting into some, uh, poly modeling. Um, where did they put Q mesh? Is that still in here? Yeah. it's down. Oh, there it is. So what was your favorite garbage pail kid to you, Ryan, and everybody watching? Hand waving. Yeah. Hi, hi, uh, Ponda Cherry. Uh, what was your favorite garbage pail card? To anybody, anybody who has like uh, any any history with the garbage pail kids. Yeah, I don't remember having a favorite. I just remember I, I recognize some of them, um, but I'd like mostly forgot them before I like researched this uh, live stream, and and then I was, was went back looking through them, and I was like, wow, these guys, these things are really grotesque. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe my mom let me have them. So uh, yeah, I remember there was like a a cross dresser. It was like based on um, the character from what was it that main character from uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. There's one that's a parody of him. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Tim Curry. Yeah, the Tim Curry character. And I, I had that one when I was a kid. Oh, Marty Gras was his name. <laughs> and, yeah, of course, um, QMesh isn't working. It's supposed to, like, merge up those faces. And I'm... I think it's one of the sell options. <sighs> yeah, it's, there's, like, a... No, no, you're supposed to snap. Disable extended sniff. Okay, we'll try turning that on. No, nope, but still no. not snap. Oh, there it goes. I had to. Ex yeah, you you bring it out past, and, then it snaps. and I'm like, why isn't it snapping? And then you have to just have to bring it out extra far, and then it snaps. Bizarre UI. I think what ZBrush part of it is just knowing that it has so many features that in order for certain things to work, it just like has to add quirks to it. <laughs> <laughs> just make it all like synchronize. Yeah. So uh, talk, uh, Jim, talk to us a little bit about your experience because you've been learning ZBrush recently. Um, I've been kind of mentoring you and and what's what's it been like getting into ZBrush? Yeah, sure. Um, all right. I would say, uh, so I've learned Maya, I've learned Blender, uh, I've used Photoshop, Substance Painter, 
Um, ZBrush is very unique amongst 3D apps because it's built in a way that it feels like you're, it feels more tactile. Like when you're working with it, it's, it, it feels like a, like a bridge between having a real life piece of clay and using a mouse and a, and a keyboard. Or actually, I would go as far as to say like with ZBrush, I wouldn't use a mouse and a keyboard with this program. Um, anything else you could get away with it with. Like you could poly model in Maya using a mouse and keyboard, but just ZBrush is like really responsive, um, like pressure sensitive tools. It, it really asks for like a pen and a tablet. Um, I think that if you are really practiced in drawing from life, it's so like, you know, you go out, you look at some trees in the park and you just sit there and, and stare at them for like 20 minutes and you sketch it in your pad and you do that for, you know, a good while. You, you draw like models from life. You do things like that. This program will feel second nature to you, at least in the act of using its tools. Um, but the one thing about ZBrush I would say is a little rough is um, it has so many things in it that most of them aren't very straightforward or simple. And I would highly recommend like finding somebody who understands like how it works and maybe like get like a tutoring um, situation going on, like where they, they show you the ropes and they explain to you like how the tools work the way they do and why. Um, so like on, on the positive side, I would say it, it's like once you're into it, it really, it really is like a tactile experience. It's very hands-on and your traditional art skills will translate well into using it. But on the, on the, the con side, I would say, um, getting over that, um, learning curve is, is a bit steep. There's a lot of gotchas to it. So. Cool. Thanks for that rundown, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a question. Looks like foolish Swami is just showing up. Uh, this is a garbage pail kid. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you're too young or too sheltered <laughs> <laughs> or, or too Mexican. Cause I, I actually just learned that these are banned in Mexico. So if anybody is tuning in from Mexico, turn off your internet, go away. <laughs> don't look at this. It's illegal. The federales are going to come get you. I don't think it's, it's, uh, I don't think he's from Mexico. Uh, <laughs> too young. <laughs> Yeah, so, all right, since you're younger, here's a little history lesson. In <laughs> the 80s, there was a trend, and that trend is comparable to, like, Pokemon cards, but it was a product called the Cabbage Patch Kids. They were these dolls, and primarily they were, the, the, the demographic was really young girls, but they tried to make them for boys, too. They were trying to make them as, like, an androgynous product, and they blew up at one point in the 80s. Like, they were... They were like Furbies. I don't know if that's before your time, but like everybody was like fighting over them. Like footage on the news where like people got trampled for like uh, not Black Friday. Is it Black Friday? Is that the yeah the, yeah, yeah, yeah I the, think Black Friday yeah. He I had a cursed. Whoa, that's intense, dude. Cursed Furby. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yo, well, I mean, they made about uh, a cursed Cabbage Patch kid. It's called Child's Play. And that is actually like a like a parody on. That's really funny. Cabbage Patch Kids have a ton of things that parody them, because what I was getting to is that the Garbage Pail Kids was just like a giant satire of the garbage uh, of the uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. So people made gar like the creators made Garbage Pail Kids, and they were just like gross and grimy, and kind of like like the punk rock variant of Cabbage Patch Kids. And apparently the Cabbage Patch Kids creators brought Garbage Pail Kids to court um, and tried to, like, shut them down. But what was it? They had to, like, change the logo or something? Yeah, the, the logo of the Garbage Pail Kids had to change because it was too close to the uh, Cabbage Patch Kids logo. And I think they also had to change the design of the, the faces so it didn't look quite as much like a Cabbage Patch Kid. <laughs> They're close enough though. It's like it's like eighty five percent the same thing. It's really funny. Yeah, I think what we're looking at is one of the. This is the original uh, garbage pail kids logo, so it's like on this curve, and the uh, 
Cabbage Patch Kids logo is also on a curve, and so they had to straighten the logo, <laughs> and then the face changed a little bit. But th I think this is the uh, the pre lawsuit design. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody knows of Red Letter Media, but it's this YouTube channel that I love watching them like while at work, um, like on projects and stuff, and they did a review of what was garbage pal kids the movie came out in like the mid or late 80s and man it was such a rough production you could tell they like they saw that this product was hot and they're just like all right let's rush this movie through we need to make money on it before the fad fades before it sizzles out <laughs> <laughs> probably There's so much of that that movie is probably why the fad fizzled out <laughs> no joke man it's it's like a little terrifying actually oh man there's like so many stories about like the production of that movie like the way they did so they actually the actors that wore the costumes for the cabbage the garbage pail kids they couldn't breathe really well in the costumes and the animatronics on their faces were like 10 percent functional so they'd supposed to they would they were supposed to be like singing or talking and they would just be like disjointed like kinks in their eyes and stuff it is very uncanny. <laughs> I mean, this stuff's already like uncanny, but uh, yeah, if you want to just see like an amazing disaster, I definitely recommend the garbage garbage pal kids the movie. It's it's pretty. Oh, that was Jim Henson. Are you serious? Uh, he's asking, was it Jim Henson? Oh, was it Mike? Jim Henson? No, I, would... I very yeah. much doubt it. No, yeah. no, these were probably people. Maybe some of them like worked at Jim Henson Studios, and they were like between gigs. And then the studio just like scooped a bunch of people up. <laughs> <laughs> that could like, be. <laughs> like possibly. Um, but I, I very much doubt it was Jim Henson. <laughs> yeah. It was like bargain bin Jim Henson, basically. <laughs> it, it's great. And if you if you if you enjoy like like disaster movies, it's great. It's it's funny. So yeah, I'm just uh, laying out like the, the various parts of his anatomy. And then once I'm happy with where things are, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dynamesh it together and kind of smooth out all those seams. One of my favorite parts of doing this kind of sculpting in ZBrush is just like creating just the whole basic shapes and just like seeing a bunch of like spheres overlapping each other. It's like so weird looking, but once you, yeah, once you dynamesh it, and you have all the parts like fused together and the way it just like clicks into place, it's so satisfying. It's not quite like working like clay. It's like working with clay, but there's there's like unique advantages to it. Real clay would be getting your fingerprints all over it. And you couldn't just dynamesh it in real life. I guess the equivalent of that would just be like what, like making the clay wet and just kinda like smearing it together and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you can get like a sponge and get it wet and just kind of lightly brush it over your your clay and that'll like smooth things out. Yeah. Yeah, the advantage with this is it's just like much cleaner in execution. It's like there's a lot of philosophical similarities, but the execute like the literal execution is its own it's its own thing. So cool. Yeah, I did a few models of like some Jamie Hewlett characters like about a year ago, uh, like the gorillas, you know, like um, like two D Murdoch, Russell, Noodle, and it was basically what you're doing here. I just like looked at the concept art, and then I just made shapes that just lined up with like the 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 biggest shapes in their faces, and then I just dynamesh them together and just smooth in between. It's a yeah, it's a really great process. It's a cool tool. And it's not you can't really do that in Maya. But yeah, I mean, whoever was asking about Blender earlier, I'm I think they do have some of those rudimentary features. Um and I mean if they have like a good quad draw tool, that might really be a good way to to pick up like what it like the features that it doesn't have that ZBrush does have, you could probably just like slap some shapes together and then quad over top of the um, the shapes 
and like in Blender, maybe pull off something that's relative to what you could pull off in ZBrush. I mean, I'm not even sure if quad draw is the universal title for it, but in Maya, that's it's basically like I don't know if you had this mug, for instance. In Maya, you could just like draw vertices over top of the mug, and it allows you to like manually cover an object with your own edge flow that you're like drawing in real time and and the the vertices will like snap to the surface that's actually the the portfolio i've been working on recently has been products for like consumer consumer products like shoes and bags and accessories and such and what i do is i would take a 3d scan and i don't know if you know much about 3d scans but the geometry is like very messy it looks like like the there are some new tools like that. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, are you talking about the Quadro? Yeah, like retopology tools. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Um, so you're saying they're pretty new? Like they just came out like in a like well like the past couple of months or. Actually, I was using the retopology tools in Blender like 10 years ago, and that was before Maya really had any. And uh, I kind of liked them back then. Maybe it's because it was the only option I had at the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll but be yeah. Good. So you can see here I have uh, DynaMesh together the, uh, the anatomy. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, before I get too far with that, I'm going to make a little change. Um, I'm going to pull these cheeks away from the nostrils just a little bit. I don't know, when I look at them, it kind of makes me think like their voices sound like, um, like, I forget what they're called, but like the little Christmas critters in South Park. <laughs> Remember, like, and they all like, they all like praise Satan and stuff. <laughs> like they're like. Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> like, they just kind of like sound doofy, but cute. I feel like that's probably what these guys sound like. So good. I think in 3.0, they added some new features. They use the grease pencil. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, you know, I've never really used the grease pencil too much, but... um. It's what? Like, it's a tool that allows you to mark things on the screen, like on in 2D, I, I think, right? Yeah, I think that's what it does. Yeah, it kind of sounds more like a like an animator tool or something, but I've heard you can use it for anything, really. The grease pencil. So I actually, I used to work with the FAA, and um, the air traffic controllers, they would see their... You know, they're, they're different flight patterns in their sector. And it would just be like, this plane's flying here and that plane's flying there. And the whole the whole point of the job was to make sure that the traffic patterns never overlapped. And so as they're looking at this glass window, in, in like the 80s uh, and older, like the 80s and, and later, man, actually even in the early 90s, um, what what this guy I was working with, he was like, in a, he was probably like in his 60s or 70s and he was a controller. and. What he said was they actually used to use a real grease pencil on the screen to um yeah, just keep track of the information. And then when they're when they were done their shift, they just have to like smear it off. It's kind of huh. it's it's always interesting to like consider how a lot of the tools in these 3D apps will have like, you know, um relative or comparable uh um, analogs. That's the word. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. In, in, like, into reality. It's kind of great. I feel like if you're able to, like, wrap your head around that, it probably gives you even a better understanding of how to use the tools in the, in the context of the 3D apps, which is pretty great. B draw. Oh, okay. B surface. Oh, okay. So that's the retopo tool. Gotcha. That's cool. <clears throat> this is like one of my favorite ways to make cartoony characters that's it's like funny. slapping together different like primitives and then you just smooth it together 
<laughs> <laughs> that's turning out really good. Yeah, thanks. I, I like, I enjoy them the most. Yeah, that angle. They're right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You see, like, all the layers, like, overlapping and the way light hits them differently. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming out really good. Dude, yeah, you gotta do, like, a bunch of these, man. They're hilarious. Like, yeah, you haven't yeah. even done anything yet, and it's already hilarious. Yeah, it's coming together pretty good. <laughs> all right, well. I feel like there's an angularity in the eye. I mean, you're doing like a generic template right now. Right, and also this as a as a 2D drawing, this is kind of like cheating a little bit. It's like uh you know, making it's it's also kind of loose and gestural. And so it's just they they drew things according to this angle that don't necessarily make sense if you translate into Right. 3D. No, that's true. It's very true. You get the cheat in 2D. But I do think I might pull on these eyes a little bit more. Uh, well, I would say, is this going to be your vanilla template that you'll use to make others? Yeah. Maybe, maybe like, do what you're talking about, like, after you're done making it a template. I mean, you do, you do whatever makes sense, man. Did you mirror that mask? Is that why it like got all of it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna make these eyes a little bit more oval. It looks a little more excitable. It's like about to get like a nice big cake or something. <laughs> nice big glass of water in the face. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm pretty happy with the base structure of the head now. I'm going to move on to the body. Uh, my personal YouTube channel link. Well, you can just search my name. Just search Ryan Kittleson. That way you can find like my Instagram, my Facebook, my YouTube, my Tumblr, my... Friendster. All right, cool. So I'm going to start another folder here for the body parts. What is your default material? Which one do you use? Uh, this is uh, a material called, if I can find it, um, Skin Ball. This is one of my custom materials that comes with Ryan's Tools Pro. What's distinct about it? Uh, I really like this material because it it makes it very clear what the shape is doing, like where the angle changes are, where the where any details are. Because um, some of the, the basic standard, you know, materials that come with ZBrush, they're cool and all, but uh, it's kind of maybe not as clear exactly what's going on yeah. with this material. Um, you could just, it's just like really in your face. It pushes the contrast. Yeah, it really pushes the contrast. I find the one that does it the closest to this would be the Sculpey's, the Sculpey skeleton, but I think it doesn't look as like 3D as yours, this one does. And if I'm doing something that's got like really technical edge flow, the sketch ones are really good because they actually make it look like a hard surface geometry. Mm. But again, I feel like actually if I was using like this one, this probably does it all. It does. It looks like really like 3D. Yeah, the Kim Jong sculpt. The cheeks. When you turn yours on and off from that the previous one, yeah, like they, the cheeks are so faded. When you put yours on, yeah, they like they really burst out of there. That's pretty wild. Yeah, so I like to switch between the materials actually because sometimes you it can be misleading to stick with one material because then you'll get even either an over or underestimated sense of like just how much your your detail is popping off the surface. Yeah. So it's, it's good to switch between them, but I like this one a lot too. Which, uh, what other two materials do you use? Uh, this one, it's uh, the, the new uh, version of ZBrush has Redshift rendering in it. And so they built in a... Um, Oh, wait, so no, sorry. This is the skin shade. This has been in ZBrush forever. And it's actually skin shade 4. It's really good for painting because it's it's just this very neutral white 
material and it's fairly bright. So any color you paint onto it is going to um, just, you know, just look true to the color. Uh, this is the leather material that's part of the new Redshift rendering materials. It's pretty good as well. You know, it's, it just kind of shows things without um, kind of mm. over over uh, playing its hand. Plastic. Mm. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, that's good for for shiny stuff. Yeah, so Foolish Swami. Uh, yeah, I made that Kim Jong speed sculpt. Oh, man, so many, <laughs> so many years ago. That was like 13, 14 years ago. Uh, yeah, I should get back into doing uh, caricature speed sculpts. That was fun. <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's make his body now. Yeah, I gotta step out for a few minutes, man. All right, cool. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I, I could take it easy. All right. Been real. All right, see ya. James Bochansky, everybody. Later, y'all. Oh, yeah, Falcon Design. I wasn't speaking at the moment. <laughs> my, my buddy James headed out, so... Um, so I suddenly have nobody to talk to. So, yeah, go ahead and uh, talk it up in the chat. I'm just here sculpting. What do I do professionally? I do this.
And actually, let me save this before I get too much further, just in case ZBrush crashes. So yeah, I typically work in the fine art world. Uh, so my clients are fine artists, sculptors, and I work with them to help them turn their sketches and ideas into digital sculptures that I can then um, yeah, get 3D printed, or sometimes it goes to animation, sometimes it goes to virtual reality or augmented reality. Uh, but lately it's been a lot of 3D printing and so uh, it's been going really well. I love my career. I like working with my clients. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's lasting for now, at least, you know, until AI takes over. You know what, I think I'll put, instead of flattening these, I think I'm just gonna use a Boolean to slice it off because that'll make it easier to control multiple objects at once. I'll just take this cube and put it where I want the cutoff to happen and just make that a subtraction object. Boom. Anybody watch any good spooky movies for Halloween? I'm just getting in, into spooky movies. I, w I was never really that into 
horror movies before. I guess I was, was traumatized by Nightmare on Elm Street when I was a kid. So I just kind of never watched spooky movies ever again. But I've actually been getting back into it. Anybody have any favorites? Sounds like fun. There is a weird glitch with the um, live booleans, which is when you use uh, mirrored instances, it does some weird, weird effects. So I'll just try to ignore that. I oh, know, I think I accidentally moved a piece I wanted. Oh well. A piece for the knees. It's easy enough to replace. I watched, um, what was a scary movie I watched recently? Oh, Hereditary. That's a creepy movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was better than Midsummer. Oh, you know what I just started watching? I'm curious if anybody else has seen. Uh, Scavenger's Reign. That is a good show. I want to do some sculpts based on that show. I love the whole, like, um, what do they call it? S uh, speculative evolution, spec evo, where they, like, design all these different creatures on this uh, alien planet. And they're really well designed. Like somebody thought about this from a biological standpoint. They're like, how would a, like animals on a different planet evolve, and how would they, you know, live? How would they eat? How would they reproduce? How would they move around? It's really, really imaginative stuff. Yeah, Scavenger's Reign is like one of those shows that I kind of didn't know I needed, but I needed. Like, I wish that show existed when I was a kid, because I would have been hooked.
So I think I'm going to do a T pose of the of a full baby, full garbage pill kid. And then once there's like a just a kind of neat clean template, then I'm going to uh, pose him and do all the like crazy deformations and messed up crap. This is the family show. It's messed up crap. funny from one of the arms it's almost like there isn't a forearm or it just goes there's no wrist it goes right from the forearm into the hand and the other one has a more distinct hand that's that's how you cheat in 2d hey zell tribal good i hope it's terrifying that's the season right try to Try to keep the Halloween spirit year round. I gotta figure out how to make this hand. Because the hand is really. I don't know. It's it's very cheated. I like how the fingers are just little balls stuck on the hand. It's a fun little design choice.
Whoops. Whoops, I think I accidentally deleted something I didn't want to delete. Luckily, part of my plugin Ryan's tools is it gives you a trash bin which lets you undelete objects. Not really in the drawings, but I'm going to go ahead and give him a little elbow there anyway. So it's a little bit tricky with his fingers and toes. I don't want to dynamesh them because it'll it'll merge the gaps between the fingers. So I think what I'm going to do is um, actually do something different to connect the fingers uh, and the toes to the hands and the feet. Other than, I'm going to dynamesh, I think, the, re the whole body and then just use a different way to attach those fingers and toes. Remesh by union. Forget what is that feature? Remesh by union. There's a few features in ZBrush I just never really got around to learning. Maybe that's one of them. Remesh by union, huh? Mesh by Z remesher. No, it doesn't want to do it because there's multiple subdivision levels. Let me try this one. Remesh by union. Huh, I'm not sure what it's doing.
Oh, okay, touching in the same sub tool. Uh, okay. Yeah, I suppose I could do, well, if I did, uh, I'm not sure how that would work because they're, the toes are overlapping. Probably just end up doing it the same way I always do it, which is just cut holes on both and then do a uh, bridge between holes. Right, thanks for joining us, US UAB. Just waiting for ZBrush to finish saving this. Oh no, ZBrush has crashed. I hope it finished saving it before it crashed. Phew, we didn't lose it. Garbage Pail Kids, you know it. This is the one we're doing today. Drippy Dan. Oh wait, why didn't it include the hand? What happened to my hand? Ah, uh, okay. Let me run this again and get the hand included. How's it going, Marcin Hoops? Glad you could join us from Brazil. No, I have never been to Brazil. What part of Brazil are you from?
Hey, Chavalowski. Well, let's go ahead and put his diaper on, shall we? So when you sculpt your mesh looks lumpy any tips um yes uh depends on the type of sculpt you're making but uh, you want to you want to think about making like your your major masses first so just like i made this garbage pail kit right i used primitives and stacked them together and then that way you're only using the bare minimum shapes that you need and that way then then you can kind of just smooth things out and um, it should not be lumpy um, and then another thing is just practice you know just the more you practice the, the better you're going to get at making the decisions of like what shape should go where how those shapes should look and you can kind of minimize the amount of just kind of messing around that you end up doing and you just kind of get directly to the point Yeah, so when you're doing a negative inflate, there's there's always the risk that your your edges are going to collapse in on each other, and that's just kind of the nature of doing a negative inflate. So let's see if we do it on this guy here. All right, it's kind of okay at first, but like very quickly, you notice that like in the thinner areas, it sort of passes inside and out of itself. So you don't want to use a negative inflate if you want to do you know uh, make something smaller. You can try scaling. Um, so it depends on what the purpose is, you know, if it, are you making it like a hollow interior for 3d printing? There's all kinds of different uh, techniques you can use. So, uh, for example, my plugin Ryan's tools has a feature that does a, a hollow interior with a specific inset. So let's say, for example, you want to make this hollow. You guys can't see my interface right now, but um, I just did uh, a feature in my plugin Ryan's tools that creates a hollow interior. So I just set a, a specific offset that I want, and then it makes an interior that is offset by exactly that amount. Uh, so that's one way to do that. That's part of my, my plugin Ryan's tools. So I'm going to type into the chat here really quick another link to it. Yeah, you're welcome, Marcin Hoops.
All right, so let's go ahead and start attaching these fingers. So for this, I'm just going to cut holes on both the hands and the fingers and then merge them together and then bridge the holes. Ooh, and it worked. Bridge geometry that's a little messy, but we can clean that up. So let's see if we just go in with smooth. Yeah. Oh no. Why did it do that? It merged it. Why did it merge it together? Okay. Let's see what happened here. Huh, why did it merge those together? Shouldn't have done that. All right, I'm gonna load it up before I did that so I can grab those fingers that I made. Bring them into this version. Oh wait, these are, what the, they were already merged. How did that happen? That's not cool. Yeah, I forgot to undo the remesh by union. Thanks a lot whoever told me to do remesh by union is all your fault. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this actually is not going to be too hard to fix. Just uh, grouped by polygrouped by surface. I can just fill that hole. Oh no, now ZBrush crashed. Yeah, ZBrush crashed. Ugh. You know, someone should tell them that there's a bug that makes ZBrush crash. Um, someone asks, wouldn't it be easier at this point to just add a sphere, stretch it and repeat it, then merge with the hand? Uh, yeah, that's that's actually what I'm doing. 
Um, but there was a there was an issue with the fingers. They accidentally like got themselves a stitch together. Save early, save often. That is great advice. Well, there's only about a half an hour left in this live stream. I've been going an hour and a half, and ZBrush has crashed twice in this time. I'm getting pretty frustrated with it. So I'm just gonna call it quits for today. Next live stream next week, Friday instead of Thursday, but the same time of the day. So 11 a.m. Pacific time. And I am going to do another live stream. I'm going to continue this character, finish it up. Let me show you guys again so you can actually see what we're doing. I'm going to finish this character up. I don't know, maybe we won't finish, finish it next time, but uh, definitely get a lot more done on this character next week, Friday, same time. And yes, I am using a standing desk. Thank you for noticing. All right, everybody, have a great one, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.